Hello, everybody, and welcome to the inaugural episode of the Fap Star Podcast. I'm your host, Casey, the Fap Star. I guess I guess that would make me the Fap Star um, if this is the Fap Star Podcast, and this is a podcast with one host. That does make me the Fap Star. Anyway, welcome to the inaugural episode. We have a great episode in store for you today, so let's just sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. So considering that this is the inaugural episode uh, of the podcast, I just figured I might as well give a little bit of a, give the lowdown of what's going on here, uh, what the plan is, what the format of this podcast is, and of right now, it is just me, the single host of the podcast, and I'm just going to upload a podcast about I'm going to shoot for once a week. My goal is going to be once a week, and if I can do more, I'll do more. And uh, hopefully I will not have to do any less. The plan is once a week. I should be able to find some time during the week, at least one time every week, to uh, record for, you know, my. I don't have a length uh, on this right now. I'm just going to hit record and just kind of let the tape roll for however long it takes for me to be interesting. Uh, As long as I can keep being interesting or entertaining or keep having something to say, I'll uh, keep the episodes going. So there's no set length on um, each episode. Some of them could be 10 minutes. Uh, Some could just only be 10 minutes for a week. Some could be a half hour. Some could be an hour. Who knows? I don't even know yet. I'm literally just as far into this podcast as you are. You're actually more. uh, You're farther ahead than I am because you at least know how long this first episode is. I'm just a minute 23 seconds in like the rest of us. Anyway, so let's just jump right into it now because I feel like I've given everybody the explanation, so let's just hop right in. So, now there is a, uh, a phenomena, phenomena, ph- phenomenon, phenomenon, I'm not 100% sure when to use that right, but there's a phenomenon, phenomena going on right now, and it's a mixture of head shops in sex shops. I'm noticing that these two uh, industries are combining strengths in one central location. Uh, I've This is just something that I've personally noticed. I don't know if anybody else has noticed this. I don't know if this has been a thing for a long time. Uh, I have no idea if this has been going on since the you know invention of sex, uh, sex shops and head shops, but I'm just becoming aware to it now. Um... Wow, I'm sorry. Uh, very unprofessional of me. I have my TV on and I just saw something that distracted me. It's on mute, don't worry. <laughs> sorry, I turned that off. I just it was going and it distracted me. So, I don't understand how this came about. <laughs> um, I do not understand how someone was like, you know what? I'm selling a lot of dildos. But I need something to supplement that. Now, me, the owner of a sex shop... Let's see, what could I sell here? Um, what, what's close to this industry? Bongs. That's close. I'm gonna start selling bongs, cause these two topics are related. They will go hand in hand with this customer base coming in to buy cum sluts for and some wet platinum, as well as a uh, a bong. Uh, I don't know when these two things became. Um, relevant but nonetheless they are so i found out about this uh it was this past year i was down in uh, my college town right now it's summer and i'm back at home and i was down in my college town and i was with some friends and it was a tuesday night and so of course we were drunk of course and there was nothing else to do on a tuesday night we wanted to go do something and so we're driving, you know, we're just, let's go do something. So we get in the car, we're like, ah, oh, Taco Bell, why not? And so we're on the way to Taco Bell, and there is a, um, there's a sex shop. Oh, I accidentally threw my pen. There's a sex shop on the way. And we're like, oh, holy shit, that's weird. And, um, and apparently it's like a rite of passage. Apparently, like, everybody's been in the sex shop, and... <laughs> So the guy, one of the the guy that was driving, uh, was was an older guy. He was he was a year ahead of us, and he was like, "Yeah, we gotta go. We gotta go check it out if you don't know what it is yet." So me, my roommate, who actually become pretty good friends with, 
uh, me, him, the guy that's driving, and then a friend of the guy that was driving. Um, uh, not so much friends with me and the uh, my roommate, but just it was it was a little early on in the year. Anyway, so we're all just hanging out. We don't really care. We're all drinking, and so we get to this sex shop, and it was called Miranda's. Well, not was it is. It's called Miranda's. Uh, weird name. I don't know. If the owner's name is Miranda or whatever. Sex shop is called Miranda. So we get inside the sex shop, and right when we get in, you know, we have to, you know, get our IDs checked. And so we're walking around, and uh, we're, like, looking at all these funny things, you know, just being drunk and immature. <laughs> and, you know, we're laughing at big dildos. We're trying, like, we're almost chasing each other up and down the thing with the dildos. We get yelled at a couple times. And then I notice that at the, uh, like, where the register is, there's a, you know, a big glass display case and also behind the register on the back wall there are bongs lining up uh, lining up on the wall uh, like three footers and also in this display case there were all kinds of things from just like regular glass uh, it was just a lot of glass mainly but smaller bongs some bowls pipes grinders you know bubblers like t- things of that nature just kind of like a head shop in a little display case and of course I was, you know, the one to notice this, of course, of course, and that's actually where I bought, um, this place is actually where I bought my, uh, first bong, <laughs> and so that was just kind of something I was like, ah, oh, this place has to be the only one doing it, I didn't, it didn't occur to me that, uh, other sex shops would have the business model to also include, um, you know, like a head shop inside, so I didn't know this was a thing, and so now when I'm back in my hometown, I... I'm driving, okay, part, another quick, just so that you can get the context of the story, I'll quickly explain to you. Uh, I was at work one day, and part of my job is uh, delivering cars to and from places, to and from different locations around the area. And I was leaving our office in a car, and I was making a delivery in a car to drop off another car. And we're going down this road uh, that connects these two towns in my area, and there was a uh, intimate treasures i believe it was it was an intimate treasures and which is of course a, a, re- a regular sex shop and there's actually a couple on this road i don't know why they're so notorious for having sex shops but there are a bunch of sex shops on this one road and also i we pull up i, I pull up through this you know intimate treasures and i see on the marquee sign it's uh, hundreds of new pipes delivered. Come check them out. And it was just like, hmm, I guess this place uh, isn't the only one. Miranda's, that is, wasn't the only one with the great idea to combine the two. And apparently it's a very um, successful business model. You know, go in, get get a flashlight, buy a bong. <laughs> you know, glass dildo, glass pipe. And it's like, I don't know, they should have some kind of com- uh, combo with, like, buy two glass pipes, get a glass dildo free, something like that. Because I didn't know that these things were, um, like, a thing. And so it was just kind of shocking to me um, that this was actually a thing. To move on to my next point, you know, with these great segues I've worked out. If you were a PC gamer, it is a glorious time of the year. The spring, uh, bleh, spring, the summer sale is upon us. Raining discounts anywhere from 80% and <laughs> b- below. So anyway, that was the weird way I chose to announce uh, it's the summer sale. The Steam summer sale, and I am having a great time. Uh, this is my first Steam summer sale and I could not be happier uh, with it right now. I think I've spent a total of about $40, and I've got Bioshock 1, Bioshock 2, Bioshock Infinite, uh, Counter-Strike Source, Dead Island, Dead Island Riptide, Dead Island Epidemic, Skyrim, Fallout New Vegas, and Gary's Mod. I am really enjoying this uh, summer sale. It's given me that opportunity to buy all those classic games that everybody needs to play that I haven't played yet. Um... Although it is also the same time of year for disappointment. And a lot of people's disappointment that they have, excuse me, is that their game that they buy goes on sale earlier or goes some kind of flash sale or something like that and gets cut even more than when they bought it. And that has only happened to me, well, it happened to me with, um, I want to say it was New Vegas, but it it wasn't that, um, 
it wasn't it was like a couple bucks literally like a couple bucks so i don't really feel that upset by it but my main um disappointment has been with the bioshock specifically bioshock one i bought the whole bioshock um trilogy for something dirt cheap (laughs) so it was like less than 10 bucks and I was like, I've always heard great things about these games. Uh, Bioshock 1, you know, was supposed to be phenomenal. And Bioshock Infinite and Bioshock 2 were all supposed to be just phenomenal games. And I start playing Bioshock 1, and I am not having as much fun with it as I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be this amazing game that is, you know, just front to back. You're just sucked into it until you finish it and how awesome it's going to be and everything like that. And I was expecting just this amazing game. I was expecting this hyped up game that uh, everybody had led me to believe it was. And what it seems to be to me is really just how long can we keep a player crap in his pants? Because the entire time I'm playing this game, I'm just scared shitless. And I'm also in this spot where every, I'm in like a cycle, so to say, uh, I'm pretty early into the game, and there's this part where I'm chasing this doctor around, I was supposed to kill him, and I died. Um, I died trying to, he runs around, and I die trying to kill him. Uh, I also had spent, uh, well, hold on, I died trying to kill him, and you respawn at these uh, Vita chambers, or Vita chambers, whatever you want to call them, uh, and you respawn in them. Uh, from you know the last one that you passed and so you walk out of this chamber and you're pretty close to where you uh, died at but you don't replenish any ammo Uh, they take some of your uh, money when you die so every time you die you lose money and you never are ever gonna have any more ammo than when you last died so now I'm at the point where I'm out of ammo uh, I'm low on money I don't have enough money to buy any more ammo and I just keep getting killed by this doctor over and over and over again. So I'm in this, I'm kind of in a, I'm kind of stuck, so to say. Um, There's really nothing for me to do at this point. And it's really unfortunate when uh, you get into a game that this happens to you with, um, that you just kind of get in that cycle. So I'm not too happy with Bioshock 1. I think I'm going to jump into Bioshock 2 or just go straight to Infinite because uh, I've heard that you don't need the other games to play them, but it's really just kind of like, you should play it because it's an amazing game, not because you need it. Just you're, oh, you're cheating yourself if you don't play the other ones. But you know, my scenario might be a little bit different. I am also not really liking about uh, this, uh, especially. I don't. I can't say the whole series, but for Bioshock One, uh, it's one of those games where I, I, I when I play a game, I always like to know what I'm doing. The biggest sin again a game can make to me is to just have me doing something where I don't know where I'm supposed to go, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, I don't know what I'm supposed to be finding, or something like that. Uh, When I am not given as much direction, uh, then I feel like that's the worst thing a game can do to me. Uh, Oh, kicked my desk, sorry about that. If any of you guys are familiar with the Call of Duty single players, that is the perfect... um, example of a game where I'm always where I always know what I'm supposed to be doing where I'm supposed to be going what I'm supposed to be shooting at and I I those campaigns are usually a lot of fun because uh, there's never that moment of running around you know a building or like a whole map and just like w- without with the chicken with your head cut off uh, you always know where you're supposed to be going what you're supposed to be doing what why you're doing it and that's something that uh, I enjoy. Uh, Borderlands is also pretty good at it because they can give you that um, they give you where like that waypoint and you know your waypoint set up and you can look on the map and like oh, okay so I just go through here uh, and that's where I'm supposed to go. And although it, those missions can be a little bit um, boring because it's just kind of go fetch me this, go fetch me that. And that's what a lot of games uh, are like. Even some of my favorites like Borderland, uh, Borderlands and uh, Dead Island also does that. Um, but yeah, so sometimes, I don't know, there's problems with games. And more than anything, I would rather be told, you know, go here, do this, do it, and have everything explained to me over the top than be in a game where it's just kind of where I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, ideally, I'd like to know where I'm going, why I'm doing it, what I'm getting, you know, what it's going to do for me, stuff like that, you know, while I'm doing it. I don't, when I'm playing Bioshock, I'm just kind of like, where am I going? Why am I doing it? Why does, why does it matter? 
and it's just kind of a shitty situation, you know, for me, all the way around. Um, so yeah, I'm just a little bit disappointed with Bioshock 2. But a game that I am not at all disappointed with is Trouble in Terrorist Town, which of course is a Gary's Mod game that you need Counter-Strike Source for. Those are actually on sale together uh, right now. Today I actually bought them uh, a few hours ago, and I forgot how cheap. Uh, it was pretty cheap, though. Uh, I'll try to get on Steam and tell you exactly. Um, but yeah, Trouble in Terrorist Town is it's a great... I didn't realize how fun... It was gonna be. Um, I it just looked kind of when I when I when I saw people playing it like a uh, gameplay like C Nanners and uh, Lefty. When whenever I you know watch them play this game, I think, oh, well, this can't be that fun. Like, th there's no way that this is you know nearly as great as they're making it out to be. Um surprise surprise it is it's a lot of fun except for when you play with the people that take it too seriously uh i've been getting to a couple of those um multiplayer oops sorry a couple of those servers where people are just taking it way too seriously uh i also i mean it's it's annoying when you when you're um playing and there's that guy that's just not following you know the unwritten rules at all clearly knows him just isn't following him uh if you, i don't know if you ever uh, if any of the listeners were into playing Call of Duty in multiplayer, but uh, if you would go to a private match and just like try to do like a private match of quick quick scoping or something like that, and that guy jumps in with like an MP5 and just sprays everybody down, and uh, and and you, everyone's like, come on, stop it, get quick scopes only, God, and he's still spraying everyone down with MP5, um, like that's that's too far, that's no fun for anybody. But uh, when someone is just like, that guy looked at me wrong, K -K KOS, KOS, kill on sight, K oh, that guy looked at me wrong, everybody kill him, and it's, I don't have my mic set up um, quite yet, I just kind of hopped into it, and I don't have my headset on or anything like that, I'm just kind of playing, and it's just like, no chance to defend myself, it's just a witch hunt, and they're always like, oh, fucker was innocent, and so sometimes when people take the game too seriously, it's not that fun, but Trouble in Terrace Town is a great game, uh, I am loving it, I really recommend that, um, that everybody listening to this game that has a PC go get Trouble in Terrace Town, uh, Gary's Mod, Counter Strike Source, and uh, combine those two and play some Trouble in Terrace Town because it is awesome. Uh, I am I'm sure it's I'm sure it's much more fun to play with you know friends and stuff like that. Uh, I've just been playing on my own in lobbies with other people, but if you, I'm sure if you have a headset, uh, you'll not I'm even, not I'm sure I'm positive if you have a headset, uh, just hop into a server and you'll have fun. But I'm sure it's even more fun to play with like a group of friends. But um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a great game, um, and it's cheap. <laughs> it's definitely a cheap combo of the two. Well, th that is a downside. You kind of you got to buy two games just to play one. But it's, it's definitely worth it, especially if you're going to play it more than once. Uh, it's, if it looks like a game that you think... It's one of those games where you could tell, like, oh, this might be fun. If... Uh, you know, excuse me again. If you have that thought when you watch gameplay for Troublous Terrace in Town that you might have fun playing it, it's definitely going to be one of those games you will have fun playing. So I recommend that you check it out. And a game that I have always been recommended but never had really got into uh, is the uh, Fallout series. And I bought uh, New Vegas, Fallout New Vegas. Uh, well, it was pretty cheap, like six bucks or something like that, like ridiculously cheap. And I'm gonna start. I watched the opening scene, like you know, like the part of every Fallout uh, series is like, oh, well, you've been out for a while. What's your name? And then you type your name and tell the guy. I've gotten to right there in the point in the game. Uh, I've basically just seen the opening, well, part of the opening cutscene, and it looks awesome. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, those games always seem kind of boring to me, uh, but I feel like, I don't know, that maybe there was some kind of maturity that I needed to, gaming maturity that I needed to gain before, you know, attempting to play a series like this, but it looks like it's awesome. Uh, it looks like it's a lot of fun. It looks like it's really immersive. It looks like it, um, and it's set in like a, and in, in, set in Vegas, so it looks like it's a set uh, that could, you know, easily get someone sucked in I guess so to say it looks very immersive and I think I'm actually going to do a let's play uh, on that game because why not it just seems like I want I've been wanting to do a let's play for years now and I think I'm just going to do it uh, just strap in and do it and um, 
I don't know. I feel like that was, that's a good game to do a Let's Play in. Uh, it's a, it seemed the Fallout series seemed to be a popular series to do a Let's Play series in. And so I feel like that's... Uh, that's that's a good jumping off point uh, fallout fallout new vegas so if any of you guys are familiar with the uh, new vegas let me know if this is a bad idea because i don't want to find out on my own because it will be a blind playthrough for me uh so yeah another the another game that i considered doing the uh let's play on doing the first let's play on was dead island uh it's just the regular game not riptide um i'm playing uh riptide right now you know, just on my own, and that it's pretty fun. Uh, it it's not like I remembered the first, the, like the original, the the the, eh, the Dead Island game to be, but um, maybe I'm just remembering it differently. Uh, I'm also considering. I haven't started playing Dead Island yet, and I'm I'm kind of saving it to potentially do a let's play. Uh, I can't tell. I think uh I, I think it would be good because I'm familiar with that game. I've already played it once, so I'm thinking maybe that'll be a good let's play game for a non-blind let's play. But also, uh, it could be uh, not that great for a blind let's uh, let's play because there are some some points in the game where there are like jumps, you know, just like ah, just like a couple, you know, cutscenes and stuff like that where maybe that experience would be better for the viewer if it wasn't a blind let's play, but. I don't know. Majority of this, majority of the game, obviously, is gameplay, and not just those little s scary uh, little cutscene parts. And so that might be fun, um, or you know, it might be terrible. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Dead Island. I'm either gonna be playing that on my own or doing a let's play of it. I'm not uh, for sure yet. If the New Vegas let's play takes off, uh, I'll probably just play Dead Island on my own because. There is. I'm gonna be wanting to play something that isn't like on a let's play. I'm gonna be wanting to play something like if I'm in the middle of a let's play, I'm gonna want to just play a game without having to do, you know, a let's play type thing over it. And so maybe that'll be the game that I fall back onto just so I don't have to, you know, make the let's play at the same time. And last, uh, the last game right now that I want to talk about that I bought is Skyrim. Uh, I bought well, I, yeah, I bought Skyrim when it came out for the PlayStation Three. And I really just didn't get into it. It was supposed to be like this amazing game where I don't even really know what it's about other than fucking fantasy shit. And it's supposed to be just amazing game. And my friends that play it, you know, they love it. And I don't know, maybe I just didn't get into it or something like that. But I'm going to have to give it another try, especially considering how cheap it was uh, on the Steam sale. I just got it. I had to jump into it. Um... So I, I bought it. <laughs> I haven't really played much of it. Uh, actually, I haven't played any of it on, <laughs> on the PC yet. And so, I don't know. I, I've, I've got all these games, and my biggest mistake uh, with this Steam sale isn't losing uh, losing money on like the game going on like a bigger sale. For me, it's buying games that I'm not going to play <laughs> or that I won't enjoy. Um, so hopefully... I will play all of these games sometime soon. And lastly, I got a new gaming mouse. Uh, my first gaming mouse, actually. I've been playing, you know, about a year now. Uh, 11 months uh, I've been playing uh, PC games with a regular, like a standard stock HP mouse. And now I finally just uh, accidentally clicked a button on it. <laughs> and so I was nervous that I lost a recording. But uh, I got a E Blue Cobra. It's if you search gaming mouse on Amazon, it's the first one that comes up. It's like eleven bucks, and it's uh, you can get it through Prime. And that's how I got it. And you know what? Uh, it's got sixteen hundred DPI. Don't really know what that means, but that's what it is. Uh, so far, for the couple hours that I've used it, I love it. It's so much better than uh, my previous mouse. And I'm assuming any gaming mouse would be a step up from what I had, but uh, this is definitely, especially considering, you know, the price, you know, the 1148 or something like that for, you know, a whole new world of gaming, uh, at least for me, especially when you compare it to the price of, you know, gaming mice, I can get like a hundred bucks, 60, hundred bucks uh, quickly. A lot of those top of the line uh, mice get really expensive. And I was not a about to jump into something like that, and I'm sure they're great mice, uh, I'm sure they're awesome, but 
I'm I'm really happy with the one that I have right now. Uh, it works great. It's not some cheap piece of shit mouse that you would expect from getting a ch the cheapest, essentially the cheapest one on Amazon, but it's actually um, it's actually pretty great. Uh, I recommend it to anybody looking for a new gaming mouse. Slap down twelve bucks and you can get yourself an awesome gaming mouse, especially entry level. Someone that if you're not really gonna notice the difference like me. Uh, it's definitely a great buy. Well, alrighty, everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in to the first episode of the Fabstar podcast. My name is Casey, your host. Uh, welcome us sometime back next week again with another episode. Until then, have fun playing some PC games on this new glorious stum summer Steam sale. Thank you guys for watching, I do appreciate it. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video, and remember to subscribe over on YouTube, it is free. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next week.